Hey, welcome to the Catalyst Church online campus. If you're joining us for the very first time, I want to welcome you to our study. Thank you for taking the time joining with us today. We greatly appreciate having you here. We have a connection team here at Catalyst Church, and they would love to help you connect with our community. Take a moment now, if you wouldn't mind, let us know that you're here today. You should see some instructions, I think, on your screen there to let you know, uh, for you to let us know, rather, that you're here today and with us. We appreciate you being here. And if you're joining us on YouTube, uh, take a moment, if you wouldn't mind, and click that subscribe button so you can join us each week. We try to upload new lessons here each week on the Catalyst on Online campus, so we'd love to have you be a part of that as well. I want to thank you also for your continued uh, faithful giving, generous giving to the ministries of Catalyst Church. You can always give securely using our online giving platform at any time. Let's take a moment now, though, and ask the Lord's blessing over the tithes and offerings this week, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy in our lives. Thank you for your provision. At every turn, we see your hand. Thank you for it. Lord, as we give to you today, of the tithes and offerings, we ask your hand of blessing to be upon them. Lord, so that all we would give becomes leveraged into stories of transformation as we proclaim the, the person and the work of Jesus Christ. We invite others into the dream that you have for them. Lord, I thank you for all of those who give today, and I ask your blessing be upon them, their lives, according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, hey, you know, I've been to a handful of third world countries. Um, and, you know, like most people who travel, uh, you know, especially to, you know, lesser developed countries and nations, you know, you, you're kind of locked and loaded to anticipate certain things, um, different standards of cleanliness, hygiene, things like that, availability of resources, uh, difficulty sometimes in travel and things. And so you always kind of have a little bit of anticipation of what you're going to find and or maybe not what you're not going to not find. And, you know, my very first experiences in third world countries, the most surprising discovery for me was food. Now, I mean, you're thinking, oh, yeah, they don't have nearly the food that we have. Mm, careful. That might actually be entirely true. You know, I'm an unashamed foodie. You know, I only have one regret. I've lived in eastern Washington now for nearly 20, for actually for 20 years. Um, you know, I only have one real regret leaving Seattle. And that is that I left one of the world's prime food cities. Every corner has world-class food, no matter where you turn. And you would think that you know a country with one of the largest natural resources, most wealth, most freedom, arguably, would have the best, freshest food on the planet. Nope, not even close. You want fresh, you want pure food. Go to the third world, where they don't harvest or pick or butcher their food until they are ready to prepare it. Think about it. You know, lack of refrigeration and you know, food transport infrastructure means they cannot keep food from spoiling while they you know, fly it or ship it or truck it across borders and through distribution centers and warehouses and streets and byways till it reaches the local grocery store weeks after it's picked or butchered. Real food, not processed, not packaged, not filled or covered with chemicals and anti-spoiling agents, not picked weeks before it's actually ripe and ready to be picked, but real food. Years ago, I was with a ministry team in, in uh, Panama, and we were going to do a church service high in the rainforest hills. And so we had to hike, you know, I don't, it wasn't a terribly long hike, but I think it was about a half an hour or so almost hiking uphill. You know, it is just what you would imagine in the hills of Panama. They were dodging vines and branches and insects, chickens running around. There's, you know, they were, were climbing trails up upwards constantly, it felt like. And we had a great day of ministry. We had kind of a, a church service there up in the hills in this very small village. You know, people, you know, they walked, you know, from the entire region around just to get there. And Well, you talk about a church service. You know, when they gather together to celebrate Jesus, they aren't kidding. You know, if you got to walk a couple hours to get there, you expect it to be fantastic. And it really was a phenomenal time. Great day of ministry. And then, you know, afterwards, uh, the villagers, they, they chose to feed our team, you know, and the food was unreal. And then, you know, then, of course, we had to 
walk back down the mountain after this long day of ministry and great food. And guess what? As we're walking down or making our way back down the mountain, there's no chickens. We had been surrounded by chickens the whole way up. Now, all of a sudden, not a chicken to be found. Do you know why? What does this have to do with Catalyst Church and the launch of our 2024 theme? Usually sometime mid-year, I begin to pray about and to question the Lord for our direction for the upcoming year. We have a, a, a theme every single year. This past year, I started, I think it was in May, and I sat down at my office, my desk, and the word clarity dropped in my lap after about 30 seconds of praying about it. So I immediately cleaned my glasses and got back to work. Clarity. That's actually how seriously I took it at first, because usually it's a much more difficult process to come up with that word that will encapsulate our theme and our direction for an entire year. And it never happens in 30 seconds that, boom, there it is. So I discounted it for the most part. I wrote it down because it's just my process. So I didn't, you know, completely ignore it. But for several weeks after, I tried to come up with the theme word, but I couldn't shake the word clarity. So here we are, 2024, the year of clarity. You know, we've all seen or, or we've heard the, the news clips or the, you know, the clickbaits about the, the rise of AI and how some think that artificial intelligence is a portending of mankind's doom. Skynet is coming. Mark my words. And I'm fine going on record saying this. The real danger of AI isn't that it will eliminate jobs or making scamming easier. The real danger is in undermining our ability to discern what is or is not authentic. You know, inauthentic input, clouded vision, fake food. If you don't think Western culture is in trouble, we need to look no further than the the gatekeepers of our language for proof, the the dictionary societies. You may not even realize we still have dictionary societies. I'm actually a member of a dictionary society, believe it or not. Actually, you probably can believe it. Every year, our dictionary societies will usually, they too, will come up with the word, but they usually do it at the end of the year. At the end of the year, they, they pick a word that they believe encapsulates the 12 months prior. Well, Cambridge Dictionary's word of the year for 2023, hallucinate. Seriously. Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, their word for 2023 was authentic. I'm a little abashed to say that the, the society I belong to, Oxford Dictionary Society, they chose the word riz, which means charm or attractiveness, more of a slang term than anything else. Though I will say, they did have a runner-up for 2023, Swifty. Yeah, that kind of Swifty. But you can call me a curmudgeon if you want. But the word authentic, it ought not be a noteworthy standout. It should not be the kind of thing that stands out in our society as something we really have to pay attention to. Authentic should just be assumed, right? It tells you where we're at, doesn't it? You know, the, the first pastor I worked for in Seattle when I was interning, he used to have a, a, one of his favorite statements or cliches or maxims. I don't know if he originated it or not. Um, I have kept it with me and applied it many times in my own life, especially in parenting. He would say this, what one generation tolerates, the next will live to excess. What one generation tolerates, the next generation will live to excess. I've adapted that a little bit for myself. You know, and I would say that the current generation's accepted reality serves as the foundation upon which the next generation is built. The greatest threat facing us, facing this generation, and therefore forming the foundation upon which the next generation will grow, is confusion. But our God is not confused. And he does not confuse. He gives clarity. 
Unsurprisingly, we also have a theme verse for 2024. And it's Psalm 119, verse 105. Join me if you would. Turn with me there. Psalm 119. There we go. 119, verse 105, where it is. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. You know, when you think of, of a, la a light illuminating a pathway, it makes no real difference how dark things become around us if we have a steady light by which we, we move forward. We can move our lives forward with confidence. We can guide our families and our children forward with faith. We can live and serve and influence our community forward with clarity. And there are three key facets to this clarity that we're going to unpack these much further in the weeks ahead as we see how our Catalyst Church core values fit this theme of clarity, respond, belong, release, become, reach. Those are the core values of Catalyst Church. So for now, a brief introduction to the facets and a challenge. The first is seeking after Father's revelation. The first facet of this year of clarity, seeking after Father's revelation. Returning to that food illustration, how many of you are feeling the effects of, of holiday and, and Christmas food? Well, it's good news. We're celebrating a new year, so all those bad eating habits will magically disappear, just as they do every new year, right? Come on, we all know the, gar the adage, garbage in, garbage out. And the first facet, this first facet of our, of our theme, speaks to our nutrition on the spiritual level. Turn with me if you would. We're still in Psalm, actually. Go all the way to the beginning. And when I say the beginning, I mean the very beginning of Psalm. Psalm 1, verse 1. How happy is the one who does not walk in the advice of the wicked, or stand in the pathway with sinners, or sit in the company of mockers. Instead, his delight is in the Lord's instruction. He meditates on it day and night. He's like a tree planted beside flowing streams that bears its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. The wicked are not like this. Instead, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand up in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to ruin. I want you to go back, actually, a minute to verse 3. We've looked at this before at Catalyst Church. I can't remember if we've done it, on, if we've talked about it in the online campus or not. Uh, and maybe you've heard this before, there in verse 3 is such an interesting and powerful image. You know, he is like a tree planted beside flowing streams. And we all understand that a tree that is planted, you know, a tree that's next to a water supply, you know, is going to thrive better than one that's off, you know, left to its own, you know, in the middle of nothing. You know, it's, of course it's going to provide, or it's going to produce more fruit. It's going to have a better time. But this word flowing streams, now it's great. It's a poetic image. It's fantastic. You know, that you, know, you think of this, this the almost, almost like a, a picture card or a postcard or greeting card. And here's this pastoral scene, a beautiful, you know, countryside. And there's this babbling brook or, or creek. And then right next to it is a thriving tree. You know, good image, not actually accurate. The Hebrew here doesn't really say flowing streams per se. Peleg ma'im is, is the word, and it actually is translated better as irrigation channel. I know, that's not nearly as poetic, is it? Irrigation channel versus flowing stream. But when you think about that, what is the difference between a flowing stream or an irrigation channel? Now, I know, you're thinking, oh, both of them move water, and both of them you know, would feed the roots of the tree, but oh, it's very different. He's like a tree planted beside this, this irrigation channel. You and I, we can be purposefully and intentionally planted next to the source. As opposed to a, a randomness. You know, this, this image of a flowing stream, a babbling brook with a tree that is lucky enough to be next to it. Does that sound really like how God works with his word? 
only those who are lucky enough can feed off of it. Intentionality. Irrigation channel. No one accidentally puts in an irrigation channel. And why do you put in an irrigation channel? So that it purposefully feeds the plants or the trees or whatever it is, the crops. So this image here, he's like a tree planted beside flowing streams, irrigation channel. It bears its fruit in its season and, and whose life does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. That image is pretty powerful when you realize how much control and how much intentionality and purposefulness you and I bring to where we plant ourselves, where we are seeking nourishment. So if we're seeking after Father's revelation, our Father God has given to us his word. Do we plant ourselves, growing in our abilities to, to rightfully handle and to discern God's word and apply our lives to it? To live it out practically, pragmatically in our daily lives? That's a skill set to learn and to grow in. Seeking after Father's revelation, his truth. That's a rhythm in our lives. It's not an occasional accident. You may have heard the old cliche, a Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to a life that is not. Seeking after Father's revelation. The second facet of our theme is engaging with Jesus' incarnation. Engaging with Jesus' incarnation. We just celebrated the most significant mystery in all of human history. Kai halagas, sarta genita, kai eskenosin emin. That's the, the Greek trans, that's the, well, the original <laughs> Greek. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Down there in John chapter 1, verse 14. In fact, let's go there. Turn there with me. Would, would mind to John chapter 1 in the New Testament, the Gospel of John? Chapter 1, there we are. Verse, oops. I didn't go quite far enough. Verse 14. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed His glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. What does it mean for Jesus Christ, the very Son of God, the Word of God, the Logos of God, to become flesh and dwell, and dwell among us? Christ followers ought to be able to answer the question of how they specifically live out his incarnation daily. Not in theory, not in cliches, but in reality. And I'd say this is an area that the, the church, Big C Church, desperately needs clarity in. What does it look like for each of us to live the here and nowness of Christ? This year, we're going to grow in what I, I call an informed imagination about Christ, unleashing the power of our imagination informed by his word, his truth into our lives. The last facet of this theme, clarity, is relying upon Holy Spirit's illumination. So seeking after Father's revelation, engaging with Jesus' incarnation, relying upon Holy Spirit's illumination. Let's go back to, to, Psalm, to the Psalms again. This time, we're going to be in Psalm 18. So Psalm 18, let's pick it up there. Let's look at verse 28. Lord, you light my lamp. My God illuminates my darkness. Lord, you light my lamp. My God illuminates my darkness. One role of the Holy Spirit in our life is to illumine truth, to shine light upon it so we can see truth for what it is and how it applies or more importantly, how to apply our lives to truth. If you've ever been to uh, the circus, you know the most impressive circus act is the high wire. Let me share a couple secrets about the high wire. First, from down below, it looks like a tiny wire. To the form performers, it's not much smaller than a balance beam. It's a perspective thing. Second, and the part that we can apply to any area of our life, the secret, to not falling to your doom is don't step where the wire isn't. 
Yes. We are surrounded by pitfalls and landmines and ravines, dangerous cliffs, traps. Here's a thought. Don't step there. If your feet step firmly on the pathway, what difference does it make what lies to the sides? What difference does it make what lurks in the shadows if you never step out of the light? What difference does it make how far the fall is if you do not step where the wire isn't? Growing in our ability to recognize the Holy Spirit's lead, the Holy Spirit's illumination in our life is key to stepping forward where he wants our feet to land. That's what it means, learning to rely upon the Holy Spirit's illumination. Now, I want to make sure that I haven't miscommunicated. This isn't merely a theme. Our, our theme this year, 2024 Year of Clarity, isn't really just promoting Bible studies and, and book work. It's about developing our skills in turning to and searching out the true, authentic source for truth. Again, I predict, and I don't think I'm off base, I predict that's going to become a critical skill in the years ahead of us. As AI rises, searching out true, authentic source for truth and knowing how to handle it is going to be important. This year is about strengthening the culture of ourselves, our families, our community as a culture built upon the foundation of God's revealed word to us. Now, I also said there was a challenge today. You know, there's an old cliche. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. I think we can tweak it a little bit for 2024. If you look where you've always looked, you'll only see what you've always seen. You and I have exactly as much of God and his clarity as we want in our lives. It's time for the adults to act like it. I'm not showing, I'm not, you know, throwing shade on anyone else. I'm not hiding behind flimsy excuses. And that's the key, I think, for all of us. We don't need to throw shade. We don't need to hide behind flimsy excuses. Here, here's a, a challenge, especially to you parents. Parents, no one else is coming to take responsibility for you when it comes to leading your kids forward in Christ. No one's coming to do it. It falls to you. Grandparents, no one is coming to take responsibility for leveraging your influence upon your extended family. Everyone, all of us, no one is coming to take responsibility for growing our relationship forward in Christ. 2024 is the year of clarity for Catalyst Church. I pray, I hope, and I believe that God is going to lead us into a renewed vision, a renewed clarity, and he's going to grow us in the skill set of discerning his voice, his word, in the midst of confusion, in the midst of darkness. But the darkness doesn't grow. Darkness is just the absence of light. Anytime there's light, we need not fear. On behalf of our entire Catalyst Church family, thank you for taking the time to engage with God's Word today. I hope that you're blessed as we embark in this year, 2024. Can you believe it? 2024 already. The year of clarity for Catalyst Church. May the Lord richly bless your week ahead as you follow and trust in Him. We'll see you again here next time at the Catalyst Church Online Campus. God bless you.